If I were to bring you a yardstick out here, how would you know it's a yard? What's that? How would I know if their measurement was a yard? There is a standard. So there's a standard. You could go, I think it's kept in Europe. There's the, the Bureau of Weights and Measures. And they have some kind of rod that is designed not to expand with heat and cold. And it is the standard one yard. And if you wanted to know if your yardstick was a yard, definitively you would go and compare it with the original. If you wanted to know if something was good or bad, you would have to compare it to the original. The original is God and his character and his nature. And Jesus was the original. That's why he could definitively say, this is right and this is wrong. This is sin and this is good. He could definitively make that because he knows intuitively if it coheres with the original or not. See, if you have a question, is X action right or wrong? You could get varying human opinions on that, but the only way you would really know is if you compared it to a moral law, a moral law above that question. It has to rise above it. It can't just be human opinion. That's what we would call an objective standard. And if we don't have God, we don't have a moral law because laws don't come from electrons. Moral laws don't. They have to come from a lawgiver. And that lawgiver is God. And that's Jesus walking the planet in that moment. Not just a lawgiver. Not just pointing that this is bad, look. But he also brought redemption. This leads me to the second point that Jesus brings. Not only does he make sense of the question, but you find him involved in the answer. You see, he didn't just look down on earth saying, wow, you guys really messed the planet up. It stinks to be you. Hashtag SMH. That's shaking my head for all the boomers in the room. <sighs> Sigh. What are, the, what are those poor humans going to do? They've really ruined a good thing. No. You find Jesus saying, I will listen to the Father who is sending me to earth so that I can walk among them and redeem the evil in the universe. How did he bring redemption to the universe? He came to earth to subject himself to it. He made himself subject to the evil in the universe himself. It wasn't a passive thing. And often other religions struggle with this idea that God condescending to coming to earth. How could God do that? He's way out there. We see this in Christ. What that gives us, the author of Hebrews tells us, is that we have a high priest that is able to sympathize with our sufferings. That we have a high priest that we have a God that actually understands what it's like to suffer. Now, we as humans have a good understanding of that, and none of us in the room have ever been God. But just imagine God knowing what it's like to suffer. If you've ever lost a home to a fire or struggled to find a place to live, Jesus could say, I get that. I had nowhere to lay my head. If you've ever dealt with abuse, Jesus would say, yeah, I get that. They abused me too. Hung me naked on a cross for everybody to see. If you've ever suffered and undergone, had to flee a violent, difficult situation, Jesus would say, yeah, I remember as a kid, I had to go to Egypt. There was a price on my head. As a boy, I had to go. He knows what it's like to be a refugee. If you have this betrayal in your past, 
someone that you loved somehow turned against you or betrayed? Jesus said, yeah. It's a Judas in my life too. We can go right down the list of things that we suffer and Jesus could say, I got you. I get it. I understand. I sympathize. You could read a big book of comparative religions and you won't find a God like that. I get it. I think one of the greatest griefs a human can experience is the loss of a child. It's so unnatural. Earlier in the first service, there was a couple here that had lost a child, and we have a number of people within the body of Living Hope that have lost kids. And He said, when you lose a spouse, you're called a widow. When you lose a parent... You're called an orphan. When you lose a child, there's no name for that because it's unspeakable. The pain of that. And those that I have shepherded through the process and been a part of burying their children and watching them walk through the grief process, they usually say these kinds of things to me even long after the tragedy. Um, Yeah, I'm still not over it. I've never experienced that kind of pain before. But even through the unspeakable grief, God's grace was miraculously there for me to sustain me in that process. Somehow God showed up. Somehow God showed up in that moment when I had no idea when I got the news, how am I absolutely going to get through this? How will I maintain my sanity through this tragedy? Somehow the grace of God showed up to help me through it. Somehow. In what kind of universe does that occur? It occurs in the kind of universe that has a God who understands even that depth of loss because only the Christian God knows what it's like to lose a child. 